Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation Mortgage Points Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia, how mortgage points work, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This is by Lisa Smith, updated January 14th, 2022, how mortgage points work. Mortgage points are used in the loan closing process and are included in closing costs. So clearly if we're in the purchasing process of a home, typically we can't put all the money down for cash up front, therefore need some kind of financing, some type of loan. Points could be involved in the loan process. The term points can be a little bit confusing because they can refer to different things and then we might have some options with regards to points. And that then is another thing that we would have to consider uh, to see what would be most beneficial in our, from our perspective, we might need to do some comparing and contrasting uh, to do so. So we've got the origination points, our mortgage points used to pay the lender for the creation of the loan itself. Whereas discount points are mortgage points used to buy down the interest rate of the mortgage. So oftentimes when people think about points, they're, they're thinking about those discount points because you're talking about that decision making process as to whether you want to put more money down up front to, to pay for a lower interest rate. If you pay for a lower interest rate, then that will have a, a longer term effect on the payments that you're going to be making. So you got that kind of trade off and, and it's a little bit tricky to think about what that trade off would be to be comparing and contrasting loans that have different rates and then different uh, kind of costs up front. Because remember, if you're kind of adjusting the loans and you're comparing and contrasting them, and you have, have a, you can adjust a few different things, right? You could say, well, if you have two loans and they're both the same years long, you could adju adjust the costs, the upfront costs, and then lower the interest rate, right? As opposed to having, you know, uh, less um, upfront costs, but higher interest rates, for example. And so you got to be able to be compare and contrast those two. Obviously, you then have the time value of money that, that takes into consideration as well, because you have the questions whether or not you have the cash flow up front to pay for it up front, and then whether or not it be worthwhile. When are you going to get basically? Where's the break-even point in terms of time? When would you get paid back for for buying down the rate and so on? So how mortgage points work? Mortgage points come in two variations, varieties. We have the origination points and the discount points. In both cases, each point is typically equal to 1% of the total amount, uh, amount mortgaged. So you can take a look at the amount and then there, you're gonna have that 1%. So that's kind of what a point means. So you kind of figure what a point is. So for example, on a 300,000 home loan, uh, for example, one point is equal to 3,000 or 1% of the 300,000 that's what it means to have that one point. Both types of points are included under closing costs in the official loan estimate and closing disclosure uh, that come from the lender. Origination points. Origination points com compensate loan officers. Not all low mortgage providers require the payment of origination points, and those that do are often willing to, to negotiate the fee. Origination points are not tax deductible, and many lenders have shifted away from origination points, with several offering flat fee and no fee mortgages. So you're seeing less of the origination points, which I think is kind of a good thing because it sounds a little bit confusing because there's a couple things that come into play here with the points. If you're, sell, if you're purchasing a home, then sometimes you might think that the points are going to be going to be categorized as uh, interest in some way. And if they were interest, then you'd think you'd you get possibly some tax benefits, some kind of deductibility of them. If they're not interest, then they're part of the closing costs. You might not get the same kind of tax benefits. So it's important to be able to, st to distinguish between the two. But when you call them both points, it gets a little bit confusing. So a lot of times I think more and more they're moving away and just calling them uh, fees or no fee mortgages. Uh, and, and, and so that would be a, a little bit, that would make it easier, I would believe, to be going through the closing statements for a lot of people that are looking for the, you know, the tax consequences of points, for example, which that, that from my experience or from my perspective as a tax person would be nice. So discount points. <laughs> discount points are prepaid uh, interest. The purchase of each point generally lowers the interest rate on your mortgage up to 0.25%. So now you've got the discount point 
So now you are basically talking about interest that is in essence uh, prepaid, right? So that's kind of the idea because you're paying down the interest rate. You're saying, I'm gonna put more money up front to get a lower interest rate. So you can, you can kind of think of that as basically paying kind of like the interest up front. So most lenders provide the opportunity to purchase anywhere from a fraction of a point to three discount points. So that's the typical trend. You've got up to three points that you can that you can pay each point representing one percent of the loan amount typically so prior to the passage of the tax cuts and job act the tcja in 2017 which applies to tax years 2018 to 2025 origination points were not tax deductible but uh discount points could be deducted on schedule a so you got that kind of de deductibility concern or consequence so you got to take that into consideration for taxes so going, uh, going forward, discount points are deductible, but limited to the first 750,000 of a loan. In addition, there is a higher standard deduction, so it's advisable to check with a tax accountant to find out if you could receive tax benefits from purchasing points. So remember the whole home purchasing process, uh, oftentimes you hear, well, you gotta purchase a home because there's a tax benefit for it and so on and so forth. And, there, and it used to be a higher tax benefit because the standard deduction was kind of lower. So that means more people more people took an itemized, it would be easier to get over the threshold to the itemized deduction. And they actually increased the standard deduction, which is beneficial to most, you know, low to income, low to moderate income people, because that should standardize the code, because obviously most of the people that are benefiting from uh, the, the itemized deductions are usually more wealthy people, because you're more likely to itemize as your income level goes up but that also means that there there's less there's there's could be less if you're standard if you're taking a standard deduction and you buy a home and now you have the interest involved and the property taxes there's going to be less of a of a benefit than you might otherwise think because you got to take into consideration the benefits you're already getting for the standard deduction and you want to make sure that you're understanding that uh when you when you go into the purchase of the home because because you can falsely think well, I'm gonna get all this interest as a deduction, not realizing that the place you're starting at is one where you're all, where you're taking a standard deduction. So you're not gonna get quite you know the same kind of benefit. You're gonna be able to deduct all that as an itemized deduction, but you only get the itemized or the standard. And if you had a, a big gap between the standard, you know, your itemized deductions and the standard deduction before, then it might not be as big a benefit. So how do you figure that? You have to actually use tax software and run projections basically to figure that in. And as you're doing that, you can consider the deductibility of points in that process. And so we will focus here on discount points and how they can decrease your overall mortgage payments. Keep in mind that when lenders adver advertise rates, they may show a rate that is based on the purchase of points. So clearly if you're advertising, you have the the incentive to show the lowest rates that you could offer and so you might show the rates after you have the discount points in that case if you're allowed to do that but that means that you paid for basically the points up front by in essence paying for the interest up front so it's a little deceptive you know in a case but you can see why they would do that should you pay for discount points so this is a yes no question i expect a yes or a no and no no they're gonna say let me guess it depends here we go. There are two primary factors to weigh when considering whether or not to pay for discount points. The first involves the length of time that you expect to live in the house. So when you're when you're paying discount points, you're saying, okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna put more money up front and then and then I'm gonna get a lower rate, which could mean that I pay less uh, when I make my actual payments. So that of course means that you're losing out in the short run because you're putting money up front but you get the less money that you're paying. So as time passes, the more, the better that decision is. If you plan on selling the home though, in a fairly short amount of time, then then the, the, the whole calculation is gonna be different than it would be if you were planning a whole 30 year time frame. So the first involves the length of time. In general, the lower you plan, the longer you plan to stay, the bigger your savings if you purchase discount points. So if you're saying, this is my home, I'm planting my roots, I'm gonna be here for 30 years, I'm gonna go right through this thing then, and I have the money up front to, to pay the points, then, then it might be a beneficial thing, or often it's much more likely to be beneficial because you've got that long time frame for the rate 
to to outpace and make it a better situation uh, even though you paid the points basically up front if you're going to sell the home in a shorter time frame then you paid the, the points up front and you might not have as long as time for it to kind of recoup so consider the following example for a 30-year loan let's do that on a $100,000 mortgage with an interest rate of 3%, your monthly payment for a principal and interest is 421 per month. With the purchase of three discount points, your interest rate would be 2.75 uh, uh, and your monthly payment would be 382 per month. So clearly you're saying, okay, it was 3%. And then I purchased the points and now I'm bringing that thing on down to the 2.75, which means that the payments that I'm making due to the lower interest on a monthly basis was at 421, but now it's going down to the 382. That's good. Purchasing the three discount points would cost you $3,000. Why does it cost $3,000? Because it's the, the loan is the 100,000 and they're each at that one percent so you got the three thousand in exchange for a savings of 39 dollars per month which is the difference between the 421 and the 382 so you're putting the three thousand dollars up front but then when you make the payments you're paying 39 dollars less per month so you will need to keep the house for 72 months or six years to break even on the point purchase. So that's gonna be the most basic calculation. You could you could get more complicated on this, but obviously if you put 3,000 up front and then divide that by the savings that you're getting each month, which is $39 per month, then you've got 70, 76, 76. They're coming with 72, but that's the most basic kind of calculator. I could then divide that by 12, which would be the six, six years, six years. So I, I can get, you can get more, more detailed on this if you actually kind of map this out, but that would be the quickest kind of calculation you could do because a 30 year loan that lasts 360 months, purchasing points is a wise move. In this instance, if you plan to live in your new home for a long time. So if you're gonna be there for 30 years, you're clearly passing that point and then it would be more beneficial after that point in time. So there's, you know, got that timing difference that comes into play. If on the other hand, you plan to stay only for a few years, you may wish to purchase fewer points or none at all. There are numerous calcula calculators available on the internet to assist you in determining the appropriate amount of discount points to purchase based on the length of time you plan to own the home. So you can dive deeper into more detail on it with online calculations and tools. This is a subject of, of, uh, of debate and interest amongst many. So tools have been developed. The second factor to consider with the purchase of discount points involves whether or not you have enough money to pay for them. So clearly, if you're in a situation, you're strapped for cash. That's why I'm getting a loan in the first place. I'm putting as much money as I possibly can at this point down up front. Uh, then you might not be able to get the points because that would mean that you would need the cash flow up front to pay for the points in order to pay down the rate. So it's a benefit that you could have that could be beneficial, but you got to take into consideration the cash flow component. So uh, many people are barely able to afford the down payment and closing costs on their home purchases, and there simply isn't enough money left to purchase points. On a 100,000 home, three discount points are relatively affordable, but on a $500,000 loan, three points will cost $15,000 and that gets a little little hectic. So on top of the traditional 20% down payment of a $100,000 loan for that 500,000 home, another 15,000 may be more than the buyer can afford. I'm sure it could quite well be more than could be. Using a mortgage calculator is a good resource to budget these costs. Using APR to compare loans. So we got the good old APR comes into play here. Uh, and that's supposed to give us some kind of standardization, even though we've got these differences in rates and upfront costs and whatnot. So comparing different loans with varying interest rates, lender fees, origination fees, discount points, and origination points can be difficult. Sure can. The annual percentage rate, the APR figure on each loan estimate helps make it easier for borrowers to compare loans which is why lenders are required by law to include it on all loans. So the APR is kind of, you know, again, you can have like a similar type of loan, like a 30 year loan and so on. 
but then you can have differences in the rates which are compensated for as we've kind of seen here with the points are compensated for with the fees so you could you could try to adjust your loans by increasing the fees in order to get a lower rate for example or you can have points involved that you could be purchasing the points in order to buy down the rate but then the question is well how do i make these comparisons from one loan to another loan and so on and so forth it gets a little confusing because i can't just compare the rate and the loan amount because now i've got these different upfront costs and that messes it all up well you could try to roll everything into one number and and that's basically kind of what the attempt of the apr is so the apr is not the interest rate on the loan it's an attempt to kind of roll in the the costs and so on into one number so you have a number that's comparable it's not perfect it's only one calculation it's one uh, tool it's a good tool that you can kind of use to do comparisons of different loans that have different upfront costs and so on so the apr on each loan adjusts the advent the advertised interest rate on the loan to include all discount points fees origination points and any other closing costs for the loan so the metric exists to make comparisons uh, be easier between loans with widely different discount points, interest rates, and origination fees. So when you're trying to figure how much you're going to pay and so on, how much interest, then you got to use the interest rate. But when you're trying to say, is this loan comparable to this loan? Which loan is better, even though they have different amounts of closing costs and points and whatnot, then you could try to use that APR as one tool for that comparative process. It's a little difficult still because you, you might depends on how long you're gonna hold the home and so on and all that kind of stuff too. So it's one tool that you can you can dig into though. Are mortgage points worth it? Here, again, I'd expect a yes or no, but no, you got this whole, well, let's discuss it for a while. I want a yes or no. So though money is paid on discount points could be invested in the stock market to generate a higher return, the amount saved by paying for points. So in other words, people that are saying that points are not worth it make the argument that you could take that money and put it into the stock market possibly and make a return higher than that that you would get on the points but obviously there's more of a risk to put it in the stock market so you got that kind of risk reward the average home homeowner's fear of getting into mortgage they can't afford outweighs the potential benefit they may accrue uh, if they manage to select the right investment so if you're putting it into the points, you're probably more on a, on a like a conservative or risk averse kind of of standpoint because you're probably saying, hey, look, if I can put the money down up front and I can make my mortgage payments lower in, in such a way that I know I can make my mortgage payments, then a lot of people might feel that I have more insurance myself that I can at least make the mortgage payments. And that might be worth more to people than putting it into the market and trying to get a higher return on the market than the interest rates would be because again the higher return you know isn't guaranteed uh you know on the market so it just it there's a risk risk tolerance reward and cash flow factor uh involved in many people's decision making process there so in many cases paying off the mortgage is more important so also keep in mind the motivation behind purchasing a home though most people hope to see their residents increase in value few people purchase their home strictly as an investment so when you're purchasing the home you're not you know most people aren't going i'm going to i'm going to purchase the home because it's it's primarily an investment it is primarily a home that you're going to be living in for a long period of time and using you know as the home not basically as an investment tool so you're trying to possibly buy some insurance on the home to make sure that the home will be there and that would be more on the points side of things if you are buying the home and property more on the investment side of things and you're taking more of a risk kind of investment strategy then you would think that more likely you'd be on the argument that that if i can get a better return on the points somewhere else then i would be doing that from an investment perspective if your home triples in value you may be unlikely to sell it for the simple reason that you then would need to find somewhere else to live so if you're thinking about if my home if my home goes up in value great but really that doesn't have a real big impact for most people if their home goes up or down in value as long as they can make the mortgage payments because if they can make the mortgage payments and they're happy about where they are then it's not going to change their cash flow although of course if the home goes up in value significantly you could refinance you could try to dip in to some of that cash and so on in that way or sell the home but again for most people they're thinking the home is where i'm going to be for a long period of time 
I've got the cash flow to pay for the mortgage. So as long as that's the case, doesn't matter what happens with the market because you're locked in and you're fairly content in, in that case. Although increases and decreases in the housing market can cause havoc, you know, personally when you're considering, when you're thinking about it. But in any case, if your home gains in value, it is likely that most, most of the other homes in your area will increase in value too. So that means if you like where you're at and your home goes up in value, great. But the only way to take advantage of that and still be in the same location you're at would be to sell the home there and then buy another home in your area, which would put you not in a better situation. You'd have to sell your home and then go somewhere else where, where the home was cheaper, but you oftentimes don't want to go somewhere else because that's why you bought the home in the current place that you're at. So if that is the case, selling your home will give you only enough money to purchase another home for nearly the same price. Also, if you take the full 30 years to pay off your mortgage, you will likely have made nearly triple the home's original selling price in principal and interest cost, and therefore you won't make much in the way of real profit if you sell at the, at the higher price. Bottom line then, purchasing a home is a major financial decision. It sure is. We've been thinking about it a lot here. Plan carefully, look at the numbers. Before you start shopping, decide on the monthly payment amount that you can afford and determine exactly how you will get that payment, whether it's by making a large down payment, purchasing discount points, or buying a less expensive home. Then, be sure to shop around. Don't settle for the first mortgage package that you stumble across. You want to hold out and check, check things out, do comparisons and stuff. There are plenty of banks to choose from and numerous resources, including real estate agents, mortgage brokers, and the internet to help you shop for the best deal for your situation. Origination points are usually avoidable and negotiable, so don't spend too much on them. So those origination points, those are the other kind of points. And then, so then you got the discount points can save you a lot of money over the life of the loan, but only if you can afford to buy them without lowering your down payment below the 20% and having to get a private mortgage insurance, the PMI. So, I mean, if you have the 20% down payment and then you're going to buy the points, but you have to dip below the 20% down payment, which means then you'd have to buy the mortgage insurance, which kind of d takes away from the benefit that you would get from paying down the points. So if you don't have the cash flow, then you might not be able to pay the points up front. The option wouldn't be there. And, uh, and then it is what it is.